Hi everyone, I'm Heath, and in this video we are going to be taking a look at 3D6 and also, interestingly, 5D4 as number generation systems for our action resolution systems in something like Dungeons & Dragons or other role-playing game. And specifically what we're trying to evaluate is what percentage of the time do the dice govern the success or failure of the roll versus how much time does the skill of the player, the skill of the character rather, govern the success or failure of the roll. In a previous video we studied the D20, which is our standard die for Dungeons and & Dragons, and then, and then in another video we looked at the 2D10s, which I had been an advocate for because it generates kind of a, a little bit of a bell curve, but the 3D6 is going to do that even more. So we're going to take a look at it. I think many people will already kind of figure out what the pattern was, but I do think it's worth doing. Might as well. The 3D6 is popular. GURPS uses it. And if you are trying to move to a system with a greater bell curve, then the step after the 2D10 is definitely going to the 3D6. So we should take a look at how it uh, influences the game. So here's our table as usual. I'm looking at a 3D6. We've been using a plus 5 modifier as our standard. But here I've got a DC12. So if you're rolling 3D6, with a plus 5 modifier and you're trying to hit a DC 12, then if you uh, roll uh, 3, 4, 5, or 6, as well as a 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, or 18, your success has been determined by the dice. That means that 46.75% of the time the success or failure of the task is determined by the roll of the dice. And then here, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11, those are the times that your skill has uh, been determinative in the success of the action, and that means that 53.26% of the time the success or failure of the task is determined by the skill of the character. For a total chance of success, though, in this case, of 90.72. And some people have said you shouldn't be worried about whether or not it's the dice or the player's skill which is determining success or failure. You should just be looking at the total chance of success. And I think that's probably what the designers of Dungeons & Dragons were looking at. I just want to know what percentage chance the task is going to succeed or fail, and I'm really not interested in knowing whether or not the character actually was determinative in that action or if it was just the result of dice rolls. So some people will definitely say, just look at chance of success, that's all I care about. But for me, I am definitely interested in how much control the dice have over the game versus how much control we have over the game. We can do this again right here for rolling 3d6 plus 5 with a DC of 15. And many people will also see where this is going, but uh, just for the sake of illustration, rolling a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 9, 15, 16, 17, or 18, those are the times when the dice govern success or failure. And then these times right here, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's when the player or the character's skill determines success or failure. And here again, we're at 46.75% of the time the success or failure of the task is determined by the roll of the dice. And then 53.23% of the time the success or failure of the task is determined by the skill of the character. Total chance of success this time, 62.49. And as you can see, our numbers with the chance of success and failure are the same in those cases. That's still basically a coin flip, and that's something that I would be trying to fix in some kind of system that I would be working on, if I were to decide to design my own. Let's go one step further with that 3D6 and go over here to the same kind of thing, but this time we're running a DC 18, and you can see what happens here. So success without modification. So if I roll a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, or an 18, then I am governed by the dice. And then if I roll a 13, 14, 15, 16, or 17, I am governed by uh, the character's skill. Now, in this case, that means there is a 74.52% of the time the success or failure is determined by the dice, and then 25.46% of the time that the skill of the character is determining for a total chance of success of 2592 so you can see what's going on in these bell curve systems when we were looking at 2D10, but then also now even more 3D6, that as your target number starts to creep upward, then yes, luck does play a much greater role in it because you've got to roll high in order to score an 18. In this case, with even with a plus 5 modifier, you're still trying to roll on the high end of things. 
and we've made it more difficult to do that. So because we've made it more difficult to roll on the high end, that uh, the dice are governing the success and failure at the high end, much more so than the skill. But it is interesting to note here that in this case, 25.46% of the time the success or failure of the task is determined by the skill, and our total chance of success was 25.92, and that means that basically if you succeed, it means it was because the character was good at what they were doing, and not because the character lucked out. The character would only luck out in the role of an 18 here, but the role still has to be relatively good in order to make the target number happen. I'd like to point out, though, that this does not mean that the bell curve system is not doing what we're trying to achieve here necessarily because yes we're making it far less likely that you're going to be able to reach up and hit high dcs based on the roll of your dice that dice roll is becoming less probable the idea that you're going to be able to do that just by the luck of the dice alone is less probable that in itself is emphasizing the character's skill more if you want to be able to reliably reach up and hit higher dcs with 3d6 then what you have to do is you have to go and get better skill. Remember here that the plus five modifier isn't necessarily something you're always dealing with. If the character runs across a DC 18 check that they need to make, they might be able to accomplish it because of luck, but we're intentionally making this harder. What we want the character to go and do is go and level up their skill. The point here is then the character would have to go and get a higher level skill in order to pass this check. Whether that means getting more experience points or more training or whatever it means to increase the character's skill. If the character were bringing a plus 7, a plus 8, a plus 9 to this roll, it would be easier to reach up there and get the DC 18 check. To me, that is a core part of emphasizing character skill over the random roll of the dice. We want to incentivize the player to go and develop the character and increase their skill rather than relying on dice rolls to do difficult or more heroic things. This is an important aspect for why a 3d6 system differs from a d20 system. Because with the d20 all of the dice rolls are equally probable, a 5% chance, as long as we're within the range of the die roll we're always having the same percentage of the results depend on the dice versus depending on the player's skill. That changes with the bell curve as you get higher and lower on the tails because every result is not equally probable. If you need a big result and you're rolling a d20, you may be able to more reliably get it through just the roll of the d20. You're much less likely to do that in a 3d6 system. Go and level up your skill. Someone asked me about 5d4, and I think that might be a fun one to look at just because it also caps at 20, which that is a negative for something like 3d6 because then you cannot roll a 19 or a 20, and of course, according to the rules as written in Dungeons & Dragons, you score a critical hit on a 20, and as people have pointed out in the comments, well, if you can't actually roll the 20, then you can't score the critical hit unless you're going to adjust other things about the weapons or the other way the rules work, which yes, you would have to do. Some groups would have no problem doing that at all. Other groups would say it's way too complicated to change things and I'm not doing that, so we'll just stick with the way it is. Both of those are perfectly fine ways to go about the game, but this one is interesting that, now of course you can't roll low, you're, the lowest roll you can make is a 5, but at least it does go to 20, so this one would preserve your ability to score a 20, although the chances of rolling a 20 are very, very low. In fact, it's one-tenth of a percent. So, if you're looking to try to add the 20s back into your game for the sake of critical hits, well, then I think I would go back to 2d10. I wouldn't try to do it with 5d4, I don't think. But let's just take a look at this for the fun of it, because if we're rolling 5d4, we got a plus 5 modifier, and we're trying to hit a DC 15, here are all of the situations, 5 through 9, and then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Our fate is in the hands of the dice. And then here, rolling 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, our fate is in our own hands. And that means that actually, in this case, 33.5% of the time, the success or failure of the task is determined by the roll of the die. And 66.5% of the time, the success or failure of the task is determined by the skill of the character for a total chance of success here of 88.18%. Now, this is interesting because we've seen these numbers before. And it was here when we were rolling 2d6 with our plus 5 modifier. We said that here, only 33% of the time were we in the hands of the dice, and 66% of the time we were back in the uh, hands of the player, which I thought was uh, moving in the right direction, at least. I like the swing toward the character because that's that's something that the player has a lot more control over, obviously, than how well they roll dice. Okay, let's go back to our 5d4. So right here, 
Let's just look at one other DC real quick with that, because people do ask in the comments about that. Why didn't you cover another DC? So let's go back to DC 18, but this time still with the 5D4. So here are all the times that we are failing a DC 15 check. Uh, 5 through 12, 18, uh, 19, and 20 for DC, excuse me, for a DC 18 check is what I meant. This is all dice, and then this right here is is on the character, and then we find out that 52.5% of the time the success or failure of the task is determined by the roll of the dice. 47.95% of the time the success or failure of the task is determined by the skill of the character, for a total chance of success in this instance of 50%. Well, why is this happening? Well, it's because as we get higher up in the DC, like we were seeing with other bell curved systems, we're depending on uh, rolling high much more, and the and we are intentionally making it more difficult in order to roll high. So this is basically moving it back to a coin flip. 52% of the time, 47% of the time, which one is the controlling factor? We got a total chance of 50%. That does mean that if you have succeeded at all, it means that it's very, very, very likely that you succeeded because of your skill. So what's going on here and what does it mean for our kind of game design philosophy? A lot of people have had a lot of very interesting insight in the comments and I really appreciate it because I think the comments on these videos has definitely helped to extend the discussion. So I really appreciate everyone uh, being constructive uh, in the comments and that's been really great. So I'll note that it's very interesting that these bell curve systems are not doing what I wanted them to do. I think that if you do want to increase the amount of influence that character skill has in Dungeons and Dragons specifically, like 5th edition, then moving to a 2D10 system is probably a way to start to do that without doing too much damage to everything else in the system. But if you're trying to think about something fresh and you're trying to think of an action resolution mechanic for a new potential RPG, my idea had been that I would want to move to something like a 2D10 system or maybe the 3D6 system, although people did mention that it's just more fun sometimes to roll 2D10. I like the way they roll at the table. And you can't completely discount that in the context of a game and fun. I like 2D10 as well, so all things being equal, all other things being equal, I would tend to roll the 2D10 instead of the 3D6, but, you know, other people have different opinions on that, and that's completely fine. Some people have also said that I did way too much math here. Well, it actually doesn't take very much time to run these tables at all. It takes a little bit more time because I'm sitting here recording them and I have to edit them and so forth, but really this hasn't taken a whole lot of time, especially in the relationship to the amount of insight that I've gotten into this. And the commenter, the nose plays, who is written down in some of the uh, comment section of these videos, came to basically the same conclusion that I came to after I finished my last video on the 2D10 when I was breaking down these numbers. And the conclusion definitely is that it's the range. It's not whether or not the number generation is a bell curve or not, even though that influences other things. But the thing that is specifically influencing what I'm trying to adjust, which is the amount of influence of the character's skill versus the random die roll, what needs to be adjusted, and in this case brought way down, is the range of the dice. And then what needs to be expanded is the range of the skill. So I, you think you see that through all of these tables. So at least what I'm thinking of right now, and I only thought about this casually yesterday after finishing the other video, was that that's what needs to happen. I need a system which has a much greater range of the skills that the characters have. That's going to be this this static modifier. It's not going to be the modifier anymore. It's going to be the static value. And then the modifier needs to come from dice with a much smaller range. That's what needs to happen in order to get where I want to go, I believe. And I want to think about that a lot more. Uh, and then we'll probably do some other videos on that later once I have time to work it out. So provided that that's something that concerns you in the game, which obviously based on some of the comments, it's not something that concerns a lot of people, which is perfectly fine. But if it is, I think that's the conclusion that you come to. Expand the range of the skill, contract the range of the uh, randomly generated modifier. I am very glad that so many people have been enjoying this. Please, if you have any insight or any comments or questions, please put them down below. I've really been enjoying reading them, and like I said, we can continue to expand the conversation. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and all of that jazz. It really helps a lot. But also, please check out The Cultists, the web series on this channel about modern-day D&D playing Lovecraftian cultists who just want to worship Cthulhu in a world full of people who just don't understand. Season 1 is on the channel now. But also, please check out my YouTube channel. I have over 150 videos on tabletop games and the fantasy genre. If you've enjoyed this video, you might enjoy many of them as well. I look forward to seeing you for them and many more videos to come.